Hi, my name's John, but my friends call me Izzy, and you can too. This is Izzy's Painting Workshop. Hey folks. So in our last installment, we stripped the paint off our miniature and we've successfully finished that process. So in today's episode, we're going to base the miniature and magnetize that base. If you're ready, let's get right into it. All right, so it's time to get our tool kit out and a little cutting mat. This is just a rotary mat thing that I got years ago for cutting on. Uh, it's good because it doesn't cut the table. Uh, and I use X-Acto knives. Um, I got a set a long time ago. Uh, you can see there's a variety of handles and I have a variety of blades. These are really old. Don't use the rusty blades, they'll hurt you. Uh, but that's what I have. And in this set, because it's a big set, I keep also drills, a pin vise, more drill heads, and several sculpting and filing tools. We're gonna take some. We're, we're gonna we're gonna possibly revisit these filing tools in a bit. But first, we're going to be using this drill bit, using this drill. We're gonna be using this guy for my Contesimento army. So we're gonna be putting him on a jungle type base. And I have some bases from Antonosity's workshop. I have a few left that I have for my Contesimento army. I started a while ago. And we're gonna take a look at these and decide which of them is best fit for this particular project. So we see he's standing on a tactical rock. He, he's standing on a box here, so it would seem. And we need to try to get that to fit on a base. So it looks like this of of the bases, like it's not he's not gonna fit here. He's not gonna fit with this this big log thing here in the way and this stick. Uh, and th these two bases are identical. So it looks like this is our best option because it'll he'll fit there. So all right, so this is the base we're gonna use. This is the base we're gonna use and it doesn't he doesn't fit entirely flush on this base. We're not gonna worry about that because we're gonna get some green stuff and we're gonna fill in the gaps there and kind of fill it in so that it looks like it naturally belongs in the base where it is. Uh, but before we bust out the green stuff and do that, we get a vague idea of where he's gonna be standing, okay? And then we're gonna take this pointy tool, that's the technical term in the industry for it, it's a pointy tool. And so we're gonna get a vague idea where he's standing. Okay, so we know we're gonna have to drill into here and here into these two spots. I don't know if you can see where I scratched into the base. So we know these two spots are gonna be drilled into to fit his feet because the previous owner of this model cut the nibs off the feet so we're gonna have to drill hole we're gonna have to pin this to the base so we're, we'll 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 get to we'll burn that bridge when we get to it we'll burn that bridge when we get to it see all right yeah that's a decent marking so since we know that this and this is where all right we can put these away since we know that this and this is where we're gonna drill our holes on the surface to get the to get the feet to fit, we're gonna to wanna to put magnets in in places that aren't this. So here would be a good place to put a magnet, here would be a good place to put a magnet, and here would be a good place to put a magnet. 
you want three magnets, you want them in triangle formation so that they stay relatively reasonably. All right, and then we're gonna take this drill bit, which is the same size, is it? Let me just make sure. All right, so this drill bit is the same width as the magnet we're gonna be using to magnetize them. See if it's on there, it's exactly the same size. All right. So we make sure our drill is in our pen vise area. So, all right. Drop everything. Yay, break it. All right, let's just make sure, redo. All right, so these two are our are the holes we're going to use, are, are the spaces we're going to use to drill for his feet, and this, this, and this are spaces we're going to drill to put magnets. So let's start here. X marks the spot. I'm going to drill. Now you want to make sure not to drill too deep because you could come out the other side and you don't want to do that. And if you can get all these gribbons together at once, get them together at once and throw them in your right waste, waste basket. Try not, get, try not to get too much dust all over the place. This is resin and it is a little bit toxic. Um, oh, an important note that we should go over. Before ever using the, the bases, what you want to do is you want to wash them off with a little bit of dish detergent and warm water and just wash off all the mold release. Because otherwise, when you try and get paint to stick to them, it just won't stick. So here we go. And that looks like it's deep enough. That looks like it's deep enough. In fact, it's almost coming through the other side. So that's way too, that's even a little bit too deep. And... Just throw those gremlins out, and even take the bait, take this, and dump it, dump it a little bit in the garbage. So we've got one hole. Now we're gonna do the other two. So let's do this. Could be deeper. All right. Let's keep going. And I think we're good. No, oh, that's almost a little too deep. I almost cut through all the way, all the way through the base. Right. So just clean up what's there. Yeah, that is too deep. Right. I'll have to clean that up with green stuff. You can see here, I went through the base. I went through it, and that's not what I was supposed to do. I went too far. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some super tack. Uh, you, you take the, you know, it's, it's basically just crazy glue. It's, it's crazy glue. You can buy it at any drugstore or hardware store or probably hobby shop. And we're gonna put a, dab, put a little dab in each hole. Actually, you gotta be a little careful. Just put it on the sides of this guy. And then we're gonna take our magnets and I keep my magnets on top of my lamp here because it's a metal lamp. And we're gonna take each magnet and we're just gonna put 
put it in and you see how it's, it fits in precisely the same size. It fits in just right. And we do three. So we have our three magnets in. And we're gonna get, let that sit for a little bit so that it has time to try. Generally, you wanna give it 30 seconds to sit in place and then about five minutes for the glue to dry without any stress on it so that it has a good bond. Uh, some people at this point would use Zip Kicker, uh, which is an accelerant. I don't use Zip Kicker because it reeks and it can cause you to get a chemical burn. And the 30 seconds it saves me isn't worth me getting a chemical burn. So that's pretty much that. All right, so something I always keep on my desk is an empty bottle with water in it. Not an empty bottle, obviously, but a bottle with water in it because you never know when you're going to need water to use for your hobby stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this water. And it doesn't even have to be much, just a little bit. Just enough to get this a little, to have a little bit of water in it you can see and we're going to get out some green stuff we're gonna actually we're gonna hold off on the green stuff what we're gonna do first is we're going to clean off this guy's base so the, there's a little bit of glue here we're gonna clean that off and we're gonna flatten this a little bit just to get a flat surface to work on. And these are just files you can get from, you know, you, you can buy a kit full of files uh, at a hobby shop or at your, you know, at your local gaming store, they'll probably have some. Uh, but yeah, just flatten that down a little bit. And now what we're going to do here is, because there's no tab, usually there's a little tab on the bottom, and I'll snip off the sides of the tabs to make a pin. This one doesn't have the little tab, so we have to put a pin in this model to get it to more firmly stick to this base. And how do we do that? How do we, we marked it. Yeah, here we go. So we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to do that. He's gonna hang a little bit off the side here, but uh, you know, that happens in life. Sometimes you just gotta hang off the side. I mean, it's like, come on, Fuku guys. You're just jocking yourself. All right, now this one has a series, this pin vise has a series of different holders for different size drills. Uh, the size drill we're looking for now is the size of a paper clip because that's what we're going to use to put in because paper clips are cheap and they're good pinning material. So that's how we're going to roll because I'm cheap and I like good pinning material, uh, I guess. I don't know. So I try to put my stuff back where I back where it belongs immediately so it doesn't get lost. It's just how I roll. Alright. So. These are some army painter drill bits. Um, and I've efficiently gotten them all over the place. Just specifically for this show. So that you could see me be a jerk. Alright. So, there's a bunch of these guys. We're gonna find one that's paperclip size, and that looks like this guy here. This is about paperclip size, so we're gonna use these guys. And, what's this look at? There's the Lefty Lucy. So let's figure out where we want these holes to be, and put an X, this looks like a good place for one here, so we'll put an X here, and right in the center of that X is where we'll drill the hole, and we'll put another X here on the bottom of this guy's foot, 
and right in the center of that X is where we'll drill the holes. The reason why you draw an X instead of a circle is because you can more reliably find the center of an X than you can reliably find the center of a circle if you try and draw one, and it's hard to draw a circle in computer. So here we go. We're going to drill our holes, and you want these to be a little deep. Now, you have to be careful when you apply pressure because this drill is a little malleable and you can see it bending here. If you push too hard, it can snap the bit. So you have to not push too hard, but not not push too hard, if you know what I'm saying. You have to get the right amount of pressure. It might be a pain in the butt, but remember, once you've expended the effort on the miniature and gotten it to be at a good standard, the miniature will be done and you won't have to paint the miniature again and you'll have it forever. You'll have it forever to use in your games and you won't have to keep redoing this process to the same miniature. So It's worth getting it right done the first time. All right. So you can see, it's in there pretty good. Um, this is a little bit tapered at the end, so what we're going to do is... We're going to file that flat so that it fits in better. Alright, and it fits in pretty snug because we checked the size of the paper clip versus the size of the drill already. So we've got our one hole. Now the next hole is going to be in here. Alright, so we've tried our army painter bit and I don't know how well those are designed to look on me work on metal, so we're going to try another bit. I'm not sure even where I got these from, but now it's a little thin. Is that the right size of the paper clip? That's a little thick. Let's try this guy again. All right, that's about the size of the paper clip, so we're gonna try this guy. I have a feeling these army painter bits are more geared toward plastic miniatures rather than metal ones. Um, not to be disparaging against my army painter, I just don't think it's the right tool for this job, it would seem. So, put these guys back. Alright, let's hope this bit's a little sharper. And have back at it. Let's see how it rolls. That's a huge difference. That's a huge difference. This bit is far superior for this job. You see those little streams that are coming out? That means that the metal is being cut. So that means we're actually getting depth. Yeah. I have a feeling these army build these army builder bits are more geared towards use for plastic miniatures as opposed to metal ones. Um, Games Workshop stuff tends to be plastic. Many other companies use metal. Actually, plastics become a lot... Plastic has become a lot more popular in the industry, uh, just over in general. GW use it, um, Privateer Press uses it, uh, but yeah. Even, uh, I mean, even Reaper Bones these days uses, uses a form of plastic. You can still get some metal stuff from them, but all right. So we've drilled here. Now we're going to figure out for real where the placement of these feet is. <coughs> Pardon me. We're going to figure out for real where the placement of these feet is going to be. Alright. So this looks like a pretty good placement. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our friend Crazy Glue because that's all this is, super glue. 
put a doll up here and a doll up here and now what you do is take the pin or the paper clip in this instance and you want to cut it a little bit away from it see how there's a little bit of room and cut there and we're going to do it again see how we got a little bit of room and cut there and we're going to give that a couple of seconds to dry so this this will give our this will give our miniature some purchase into the base so when we drill this base it'll give it some purchase to stick and all right that's that's fine all right now we've decided we're going to put the mini like this so we're just going to go like this and push a little hard into the base so that those two pins scratch the base a little bit and we can see where they make holes and you can see there's one there and there's one there and what we'll do is we'll take that as our cue where to put the holes for the feet and this should be much easier to draw ah this watch your fingers watch your fingers I was gonna say this is much easier to drill than the metal you were just drilling so watch out and we'll do it again this time I'll try not to stab myself in the finger that'd be in my best interest I think oh <laughs> see now in this case it doesn't really matter if you go all the way through the model because if you go all the way through the base because this isn't going to be showing and let's see if we got our measurements right uh, it would appear we got them pretty dead on all right and that guy's sticking there all right but you see how there's these gaps we don't want those gaps so we're going to do something about that I remember our friend this water here that we got earlier there's a reason we got that we got out the water because we are going to make some simple green uh, not simple green uh, green stuff green stuff so green stuff is really just two-part plumbers epoxy you can get it in any hardware store uh, you can also get it in any hobby shop usually. Uh, you might be better off using green stuff from a hobby shop because they might have they might have mixed the chemicals in it specifically to work better with hobbies than they than with pipes. But what you want to do is you want to cut yourself a little bit of that off here. So you got a little bit. You're always gonna cut you're always gonna make a little bit more than you need because you you know it's it's hard to gauge. But, and then take a little bit of the blue and cut about an equal part off of that. So maybe a little bit more. So, all right, you got that much and there's a little bit of plastic in here. We're gonna get that off. Here we go. Right, so get that plastic out of there. All right. And now these are kind of hard and chunky you're gonna mush them together and mm -hmm. you wanna wet your fingers a bit so that they don't stick and just mush this together until they go from being blue and yellow into one blob of green and the way I like to do that is squish them out flat then roll them. All right. Eventually, you got something nice and workable, and it's green. And you've got a pretty good amount of working time with this stuff. Like I, th I think I think you got like about an hour before it turns hard, too hard to work with, 
And then after that, you want to let it sit for about 24 before you do anything with it. So we take our friend the water, keep this stuff wet. The wetter it is, the easier it is to work with. And you see how there's fingerprints in it? When it's wet, there's no fingerprints. So we don't really care because we're not gonna, like you can see there's fingerprints here, there's no fingerprints. We don't really care in this application because it's not gonna be applied in such a thick amount that we're gonna see fingerprints in the first place, but all right. So what we wanna do is roll this stuff out pretty thin and take some of our water, get on our working mat here so that the simple, so that the, the green stuff doesn't stick to it. Just roll it out, just roll it out a little bit. And you want it nice and thin. All right, so we're gonna revisit this guy. We're gonna take these holes, we're gonna put some super glue here on the hole and here on this hole. We're going to put them there and we're going to, where do I have him? Yeah, here do I have him. We're going to refit the mini into those holes. Right, good. And good. Good. We're going to fit the guy into these holes. And we're going to let that sit for a little bit and work this a little bit more. Just keep making it more and more malleable. Just the easy, the more malleable you make it, the easier it is to work with. And it's just a lot better to work with it when it's more malleable. See what I'm doing? I'm just twisting it like this. Just twist it in on itself. And just keep, keep squishing it around. However you want to get it squishy. All right. So first, if you see this guy, you can see where we put that hole and we, we want to fix that. So we're going to take a little bit of this stuff. Doesn't take much. This little bit here and we're gonna wet the tip of our tool. Take this guy and just push him in. And you see, even that's even that little bit is more than we thought we would need. It, you know, it's even more than we need. But you see how? Just get that in there. Plug that hole, and then what we do is, all right. Once we plug the hole pretty decently. get out this tool, actually not even this tool, get out this tool. Now I like it because it's got this end has this little stampy bit and this end has this little slicey cutty bit. It's not sharp, like you know, you're not going to hurt yourself, but it's, it's, it's sharp enough that it'll actually cut the green stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our water, we're going to get our tool wet. I'm going to tamp that back down. We're going to tamp that in there with that with that flat end. And there's water on the there's water on the green stuff. We don't even care that we like it that way. We like it that way. Now, we want to make this look a little bit more organic and make it fit in with the base itself. So we're going to take our stabby tool. That's the official industry term, the stabby tool. And we're just going to poke holes just to make it look more and more like it's part of the base make it look more and more organic and I don't really do 40k stuff much but like if you're trying to get a Nurgle texture and you want to get a, a holy texture like a like a like a porous texture this is another way to do it this this will do it and we're just we're just putting hole we're just poking little dots in here to make it look more and more organic and less and less like just a flat piece of putty that we put in there. The more holes you put in there, the, the more it'll work until we get there. And then take a little bit of paper towel, dry that off, and 
when we put paint over this, you're not even going to be able to tell. Now, to work with our big problems. So we've got this guy here, and you can see around this part of the base, here, and in here, and even a little in here, the box is sticking up out of, off the ground. So we want to fix that. Keep this stuff malleable, keep it moving around, and keep your fingers wet when you're doing it so it doesn't stick to your fingers. And we're going to do the foot first because it looks like it'll be the easiest. And roll some out and then figure about how much you need. Cut it here. That should be more than enough. We can always remember, you can always take some away. It's hard to put more on. Eh, that's not even true. You can take an add. Green stuff's pretty forgiving to work with. Close your crazy glue, because you should always close your crazy glue. Alright, your super glue or whatever. And then keep this stuff wet. Just keep this stuff wet when you're working with it. It'll make your life a lot easier, trust me. And now we're going to take this and we're going to just put it around the foot area. See where it is? We're just going to put this in here. And just like we did with that rock, we're going to fit it in here until we fill the hole with putty. We're going to fit, fill it. There we go. We're going to keep this tool wet. That's keep your tools and your putty wet whenever you're working green stuff. It makes your life easier. It really does. We're just going to get in there and tamp it down and just make it look organic like that boot is stepping on something. And just tamp this down, keep tamping it down, and all right, and that's starting to look like something even. Even without putting the holes in like we did here, you can see it's starting, just it's getting a little bit of texture from this tool, so it's getting, it's getting in there. All right. And now we want to take our little stabby tool and do just like we did before. Make it look organic and like it's got holes. And as we know, nature's full of holes. That's what nature's full of holes. Just do that up. This little guy in here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing in here, but just putting more holes and just making that look organic just giving it an organic texture and you can see so the base itself I don't know how well you can see on camera but the base itself has a lot of granular texture to it so that's what we're putting holes in to try and mimic that texture um, and it seems to be doing the job okay. All right, now with what we've got left, we got a pretty good amount left. And just keep keeping this stuff malleable. Whenever you use it, just keep squishing it around and keeping it malleable. It'll make your life easier. So there's a couple of different holes that we're gonna have to plug in this. So we're going to want to get some stuff here. We're going to want to get some stuff in here and in here. This side actually seems okay, but here, here, and in here, that's where we're 
that's where we're going to focus. So we're going to break off one, two, three bits of green stuff. Squish that around. We're going to get the inside one first. And once again, we take our, our pushy tool, keep it wet, and just poke that in there. Poke that in the bottom there so that it's pushing underneath that creep and filling in that gap. Like they say on the subway station, mind the gap. Like they say on the train, mind the gap. So here we go. You can see that gap's in. That gap's filled. And once again, we're just going to take our stabby tool, put in that texture. All right, you can see there's a little leaf there. So we're going to try and preserve that detail that exists on the base, and we're going to try and push this in underneath that leaf so that the leaf still shows through. Just keep, keep this putty tool wet when you're working with it. And these are just sculpting tools. You can get them at an art supply store. You might even be able to get them at your FLG, at favorite local gaming store, FLGS, whatever the acronym is, I forget. Cut that off. So you can see we've, we've filled that gap. And we've preserved that leaf detail. And what we're going to do is we're just going to try and make it look a little organic. And you just want to try and, you don't want to obscure the detail on the box if you can avoid it. And you just want to get that in there and try and make it look reasonable. There's no real right or wrong way to do it. Just as long as you get the job done. And also, don't go too crazy with this. It's your hobby. Enjoy it. Let it be something that reduces stress for you. Hobbies should give you back spoons, not take them away. All right, so you see it's relatively fill in there. So we're gonna take our stabby bit again, and we're just gonna, all right. So here is our guy. Our base is magnetized and our, our miniature is on the base. It's, it's pinned on, it's on there pretty sturdy. And it's been puttied so that you can see there's no, there's no gap between the miniature and the base itself. All we have left to do right now is finish assembling this guy by putting on his arms. This is one of CB's newer designs. Cor this is one of Corvus Belly's newer designs, so they've mercifully made it a lot easier to glue on arms. Uh, you see there's just a big nub in there and a big hole there. They fit together nicely. You don't even have to pin this. Some people do. I... I'm done pinning for the day. So that's there and you just hold it one, hold it for 30 seconds. Just make your life easy and just hold it for 30 seconds. So one, 29, 30. Okay. And now same thing with this. And here we have our assembled orc. He's got his arms, he's on his base. Ooh, ah. So like, yeah, he, he's looking pretty good. All right, folks. So we've made it to the end of this episode and next episode we're going to be working on laying down a base coat, a zenithal prime and a base color coat with our airbrush. It's not gonna be crazy. I'll show you how I use the airbrush uh, and my airbrush isn't a crazy expensive airbrush. So I'll show you the equipment I use and I'll show you my techniques. As you know, I, I'm still learning with the airbrush too, but we'll learn together.
Thanks for watching this video, and I hope we'll see you in the next one. Later.